In this video, I'll show you an example of a Venn diagram with two particular premises. I'm going to look at number eight in your book on page 273. The argument they've given you is sum M are not P, sum S are M, Therefore, sum S are not P. And we've been asked to draw a Venn diagram, so we'll do that. Again, they're giving you the S, M, and P so that you understand which one is the major term, uh, which one is the minor term, and which one is the middle term but these will be different depending on what the argument is. But they will always be in the same place. The major term will always be represented by this circle, the minor term, this circle, and the middle term, this circle. Again, they've just made it easy for you. If we look at the mood from top to bottom, we've made sure that it's in the correct standard form, so it would be an O statement, an I statement, and then an O statement, so it's O, I, O, and the figure is one. We can use that again to check our answers. But what we're concerned about here is how do we deal with two particular premises? So because they're both particular and one is not universal, we don't have to worry about which one to put in first. We can put in either one first. We just have to remember what the rules are. So off to the side, I'm gonna make some notes that will help me to understand how to put these into the larger Venn diagram. You need not do this. It's not necessary. It's just helpful. I'm not going to require it on a test if you can do it without writing these on the side. But if I wanted to say sum M are P, it might help me to look just at the M and P circles. I want to say that sum M are not P. So my X in this case would go in this larger part of M. If I wanted to look at the second premise, sum S R M, my S circles here, my M circles here, sum S R M, the X would go in the middle. Now what we need to do is translate that into the larger Venn diagram. So let's look at the first one. If I highlight this larger part of M, this Pac-Man, right? That's where my X should go. So that same spot is here in the larger diagram, highlighted in yellow. Feel free to use colored pens and pencils if it helps you. Also, this area between S and M that I'm going to highlight in red is here in red on the larger diagram. So starting with some M or not P, I know that my answer has to go somewhere in this yellow highlighted area of M, in this larger part of M that corresponds to this larger part of M if I take these two circles alone. But what I notice is, again, that that pesky S circle is dividing my larger part of M, or my M Pac-Man, into two parts, parts one and two of the Venn diagrams. Because it's parts, because it's made up of parts one and two, and neither one are shaded, I put my X on the line that's created by the third circle to show that I don't know whether it's in part one or part two. So I'm gonna put my X on this line to show that the line is not important. That this S line makes no difference whatsoever. The same thing here. I, want, I know that this red area is divided into parts two and three by this other P circle that we're not working with when we're looking at the second premise. So this other P circle isn't important. So what I'm going to do is, because both of these are not shaded, they're open, areas two and three in the red area, 
representing some S or M, I'm gonna put my X on the line of the circle that I'm not working with, the one, the line that divides these two parts of the area. If any of these areas, if the large, if we were looking with working with the larger part of M and areas one and two, if either one of those areas had been shaded, then we would have put the X in the open spot, just like we did in the original example that we looked at. The X went in the open spot because even though it took up the spaces of three and four, four was already shaded. We put the X in the open spot. When there is no open spot, or rather when the whole thing is open, we put it on the line of the third circle that's bisecting it or dividing it into two. So I hope that helps you to understand how to do a Venn diagram with two particular premises. And of course, the last bit would be to go and look at the chart to determine whether OIO1 makes this Venn diagram valid, conditionally valid, or invalid from both perspectives. Really, what we ought to be doing is looking at the conclusion and saying, okay, some S are not P. Well, here's S and here's P can take a look at those. If some S are not P, that means the X would go in the larger part of S that doesn't overlap with the P circle to show that there's at least one S that's not overlapping with P. So is that contained in this diagram? Well, when there are two particular premises, it's a little difficult to tell. My guess would be looking at this diagram, if this inf is this if you're asking is the information from the conclusion in this diagram after entering in the two premises, I would say no, I don't see that X in the larger part of S. But let's make certain. We go to figure one under unconditionally valid forms and it's not there, OIO is not there. It's also not under conditionally valid forms under figure one. So we're right, it is invalid from both perspectives. And that's how you do a Venn diagram with two particular premises.